record, you know. <laughs> Just knocked over my pile of patterns. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I thought after doing a very big project, I would take a little break and make a simple sewing tutorial on making a dress. And in other news, I got my first tattoo! I decided I'd get stabbed enough by so many needles, why not make some of it pretty? To start off with, I have these patterns, which I have never done before, so I don't know how they fit me, and I am not going to make a mock-up. So I'm going to pick one and get started. Are you done? I have chosen this pattern, and the fabric it recommends is all non-stretch fabric. So I am going to work with stretch velvet. Instructions? Don't need those. Make sure you watch until the end for some very important information. I trace my pattern in case I want to try a different size later, but trust me, I never make mistakes while sewing. Especially not with fabric choices. After cutting out the front and back, I realized that I didn't have enough fabric for the whole dress, so the side panels were cut from a plain black spandex. Also, the pocket flaps. It is day two now, and I am going to stitch the pocket flaps, but not real pockets, because real pockets are never useful. I didn't mark the dart on my paper copy of the pattern, which is fine, because dart placement is really not very important. So I'm just gonna wing it. Let's go with here, here, and here. I quickly stitched these in place, hoping that they will be even. My foot fell off, but eventually I stitched around the pocket flaps. This mark is for positioning the pocket flap, but I am just gonna freehand it. I know a lot more than the pattern designers, so I pinned the left side flap and then the right. The best look for top stitching is to do a whip stitch, and to ensure its evenness, you need to make sure that you use both hands. I can't finish this seam yet because it goes over that seam, so I'll do that now. I pinned the side front pieces, making sure to shove the flaps out of the way. I chose a decorative stitch to attach these panels, and stitched that along the whole seam. With those seams out of the way, I can now finish attaching the pocket flaps using the same dual hand technique. It's more efficient to use both hands. I did the back panels the same way, but without any fake pocket detail. There was a pattern piece for the front facing, so I added that. But the key tip for this step is to not notice when the thread breaks and just keep on stitching. Thread is not important while sewing. Piles of fabric always end up as dog beds around here. Time for the side seams! Not gonna pin it because pins are for wimps. Did I mention thread is not important? More fun decorative stitches for the structural seams here. The pattern back calls for a zipper, but I decided it would look better without one, so I'm just closing up the back with a zigzag stitch. I added my tag upside down to the back neck seam so it can be read while I'm wearing the dress. With one careless stitch of the shoulders, the base dress is done! Now it's time for sleeves! These are bishop sleeves, so wider at the bottom with a nice long cuff. I tried to run a gathering stitch, but failed miserably, so I went with pleating instead. I used a random mix of box and knife pleats and stuffed them unceremoniously under the presser foot. To hem the cuffs without stretching, I stitched along a piece of tissue paper, which then neatly tears along the perforations. Sometimes. Emmy thinks this is a great spot to watch for chipmunks. So she wants to be involved? Fine. I pinned the bottom of my sleeve on my new sewing table, which had no complaints whatsoever, and I moved my machine to a chipmunk-free and more ergonomic location. I find this to be a good position to stretch while I sew. Also, to pet while I sew. I stuffed the sleeve into the sleeve hole and pinned around it. I sewed the sleeve in by pulling on the fabric to ensure that the seam will be stretchy later. To him, I ran this machine with the handy dandy button here, and when that got too boring, I switched positions again. Don't want sewing to get boring. This video is sponsored by The Big Brain at Emmy Incorporated. Are you tired of hunting chipmunks the old-fashioned way? Oh boy, do we have the solution for you! The Chipmunk Raider 5000, with built-in radar camera so you'll get an automatic alarm when a rodent is in range. It also works for squirrels and rabbits. Order today for seven low payments of dog treats. Call now! Time for bows! I cut a bunch of rectangles, and I know I said this was a sewing tutorial, but I'm throwing that out the window. It's hot glue time! Ow! I do so well with burning hot things. Anyway, I turned the burnt snake right side out and glued the ends in the middle. For the middle strap, I grabbed more hot glue and this sheer ribbon. Sheer to let all the glue through it. Ouch! That was stupid. A little more hot glue and the bow is done! I've had enough of hot glue for now, so I switched to school glue. I carefully positioned these bows in very flattering spots, and this dress is ready to go!
whole video, and in case you didn't catch it, April Fools! This dress was entirely just a joke. Although once I remove the stupid pocket flaps and the ridiculous bows, it's actually a pretty well-made dress. If you want me to make an actual tutorial on making a simple dress, let me know in the comments. But also, let me know how many jokes you caught during the video, because there were quite a few. My favorite and most subtle was the fact that I dyed part of my hair purple. So uh, let me know if you caught that one. It only appeared in a couple shots, though. Uh, and I am gonna go remove certain things off this dress and go find some pajamas. Happy April Fool's Day, everybody! And if you watched this video after April Fool's Day, then I am sorry, or I hope you enjoyed it. So let me know what you thought.